resetting the biological clock. How do we do that? What's the mechanism? And so obviously um, going hungry occasionally, exercise is going to help, but I know that you have a regimen that I'll lovingly call a regimen of drugs or precursors to things um, that we can take. What can we do to reset that biological clock? Mm -hmm. Well, there are different levels to resetting aging. Uh, there are three levels that we know of. The first is pretty easy to reset uh, or to, to manipulate. These are the proteins that turn um, genes on and off very quickly. We call them transcription factors. Mm. And they, they basically read a gene and make a protein. That's what they do. Uh, that's level one. That's easy. Go a little bit hungry. That'll change. Level two is a little bit harder. The level two is not just changing which genes are quickly turned on and off, but actually silencing genes for, mm. for a long time. And this is where my enzymes that we work on, the sirtuins, come into play. Let's go back to the Pac-Man. They clip off acetals off these packing proteins. You spool up the hose and it becomes, becomes locked in. That, that gene gets silenced for a long time. So to do that, you can exercise, you can diet, but you also, I think, you need a little bit of help as well. What gets really interesting, and this is something most scientists don't even know about yet, is level three, the deep layer of aging there's actually a DNA clock that tells our bodies how old we are. We, I could take your blood and read it, and I could tell you roughly when you're going to die. What? Yeah, we can do that. What Just, are you looking for? We're looking for chemical groups that get added and subtracted to our DNA, the, the long string uh -huh. in the cell. You get chemical modifications in predictable ways as you get older, starting from conception. So even in the womb, even as a kid, even as a teenager, you're aging based on this clock that goes up linearly. And where you fit on that line, it's very accurate that tells you your biological age. But how do you know when the person's gonna die? Is that just based you on just actual draw a straight tables? Line. Is it actuarial tables though? The human average uh, human lifespan is 86. And is that what you mean? Or is there, could you see something specific in my line that would say, ooh, you're headed for 68, sorry. Uh, no, it's not, not specific, but what it's based on is machine learning based on thousands of people's um, code of methylation yep. on the genome and comparing that to their health and their date of death. Oh, fuck, that's so interesting. So if you were to take my blood right now, what would you look for exactly? We would read the methylation. The chem these are chemicals, hydrogen yep. and oxygen, bound to the DNA, chemically, physically bound, um, and those accumulate as you get older in very predictable ways. In fact, they're so predictable that we can use the same clock to measure the do a dog's age and a human's age. Whoa, all based on methylation. Right. Okay, what causes methylation? Well, there are two classes of enzymes, the ones that add the methyl chemicals and mm -hmm. those that subtract it. Okay, how do I take a boatload of ones that subtract it? Ah, that's what we're working on. Now, here's the key, level two aging reset which we can do by some of the things that I'm doing in my life, yep. and probably you are too, those aren't permanent changes. You can't just do that and expect that, take, take one treatment and you go on living for another 10 years. Okay. Because level two isn't as permanent. It's somewhat permanent than level one, but level three is truly permanent. It, you could reset yourself 10 years and then go back and then wait another 10 years and potentially reset mm. the clock again if you know how to do that. And we're just starting to figure out how to do that. Okay. So level one, diet, exercise. Cool. Got it. Level two, uh, metformin. You taking metformin? Right. Okay. So I've talked about this on the show before, but explain what is metformin? Why is it prescribed to diabetics? And now why is a seemingly rash of non-diabetic people taking it? Yeah. So there are three main pathways that regulate aging in animals and probably in ourselves. There are the sirtuins that I've talked about a lot today. There's one called mTOR, which responds to how much amino acids are in, how many amino acids are in your body. It will hunker down and protect the body the fewer amino acids it has access to. Okay. Okay, then the third is called AMPK, and this is the energy sensor. When your body has low levels of energy, it will allow the body to hunker down and protect itself from diseases. But why AMPK is worth mentioning is this is one of the targets, as we call it, of the drug metformin. Metformin okay. will activate this AMPK pathway and make the body think that it's hungry when often it's not. And also keep your blood sugar levels more steady. Why would I, uh, hungry at a cellular level or I actually experience hunger? 
at a cellular level. Okay. But it also has an, an interesting side effect is from, for a lot of people, myself included, it's a bit harsh on the stomach. Mm. So it also reduces my appetite. But what, what's great about metformin is that it's been in millions of people for a few decades. So we know the side effects. Mm. Um, they're relatively and, and low. Sorry, really fast. So metformin is creating at a cellular level the sense yeah. that I'm hungry. And you're saying that from a hormesis perspective of a little bit of bad, it's like stressing the system. And that's why we think it works. It is. It's exactly doing that. And so that it actually helps the body respond in a way to boost the energy supply. Uh, so one thing it does that's, that's undeniable is it boosts the level, the numbers of mitochondria. The, it actually creates additional mitochondria. So your cells are getting more efficient or more able to generate energy? Right, over the long run. But in the short Whoa. run, what it does is it actually poisons part of the mitochondria. So it's, it's a but, little bit of poison that leads to benefits down the line. What part is poisoned? Uh, it's called complex one. So the, there are protons that are in one part of the area of the mitochondria in, in, a, in a membrane region and you, the cell builds up protons. It becomes really acidic in that region, but they, the cell wants to release them. So what they do is they put little pores in between the membranes so they can leak from the high concentrated zone to the low concentration in the middle. And as they pass through that pore, it spins the pore around. And that spinning, physical spinning of that protein will generate chemical energy called ATP. That's how ATP is created. And without wow. ATP, we're dead in about 10 seconds. Yeah. Okay. That's crazy interesting. Uh, and you're saying, sorry, to go back to the poison, the poison yeah. is elevating those levels, which is causing more to it's go through the It's actually decreasing pores. ATP in the short run. Mm -hmm. So the cell says, man, I haven't got enough chemical energy in ATP. So that's what forces it to create more mitochondria. Right. So that's the poisoning part. It is. So the increased number of mitochondria is in response to the slight poisoning. Exactly. But there are two other important points. The cells in our body also think that they need to become more sensitive to insulin. Yeah. Which keeps our glucose and sugar levels more steady. Okay. Yeah. That's key because that's what helps the diabet type 2 diabetics recover um, and you know, prevents the disease from getting worse. Yes. And the second is that it's just been discovered in humans that if you take metformin, a lot of it, and exercise, it can blunt the effects of exercise on building mitochondria. What we think is going on is that uh, you don't want to always have metformin in your system or your body won't have a chance to recover from that slight poison. I'm not going to prescribe anything. I'm not a doctor, but we think <laughs> it's be better to take metformin on days that you're not exercising and recovering uh -huh. and pulse it again. So you've got metformin, exercise, metformin, exercise. Right. I know mm -hmm. you're not prescribing anything, but... Mm -hmm. uh, how many days are you taking it? How many days are you not? How often are you exercising? How often are you not? Um, I actually spent a lot of my 30s and 40s not exercising at all. It's crazy, right? Uh, someone like me. Mm. Uh, but I've become better at it now that I'm, you know, I was approaching 50, now I'm 50. Uh, so I, I spend uh, about four hours in the gym on the weekend with my son, Benjamin. Do you like two hours a day? No, four hours straight. But it's not all exercise. Okay. Uh, so it's an hour with my trainer, Sean who does mostly a combination of, of weights and stretching, um, some free weights, some machines. Then it's another hour on my own with my son. We do some treadmill, some more stretching, and essentially just muck around at doing stuff that's fun for him. Um, and then we also then we do um, some, some yoga downstairs in the gym, a little bit of relaxation. But the best fun part that I really love is that at the end, we do a sauna, hot tub, cold yeah, bath, yeah, 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 yeah. sauna, hot tub, cold bath for about an hour. Jesus. And I feel fantastic. If you like that clip, check out another powerful clip right here and I'll see you there.